Hey, how's it going everyone? Um, this week is Valentine's Day and my girlfriend is coming over tomorrow after work, after I finish work. And um, we're going to spend a couple of um, hours together, go to a really nice breakfast, and then she's going to spend the night, obviously, because it's Valentine's Day week. But um, last night, I had some friends come over <laughs> to watch for like a movie night, and my place is literally disgusting. I mean, I ended up getting kind of tipsy on Chardonnay. <laughs> and uh, I just didn't feel like cleaning but we have all of this cleaning to do today so uh, these are all the foldable chairs I took out from my bedroom we gotta put those away um, there's coffee tables a mess uh, I mean and this is this is the kitchen I mean absolutely floored by the amount of things I have to do but it needs to be done because I don't want my girlfriend to think I am a lazy butt also, last week we went on this super, super cute little date. We made these like terrariums. Um, I posted them on Instagram, but they are so cute. It was a, like, if I think it's, we went to a place called Plant House. They have a couple of locations throughout the country. You can book a terrarium making workshop and you'll make something like this. If you're wondering where the heck are my plants, they're actually, I'm actually soaking them overnight. Um, actually, I forgot to soak them overnight, so I'm soaking them right now. <clears throat> And once a week, you usually soak them for about 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours. And then you dry them off and put them back in the terrarium because they're air plants. They don't really need soil, but they do need water. And especially if they live in um, inside conditions, uh, they need to be soaked. And if they lived outside, like maybe over there in a more humid area, they would probably just need a spritz every now and then. But here they are. I am soaking them in this red Solo cup. Uh, I, made he I might have gotten the solo cups out for last night's uh, <laughs> movie night, but it um, serves another purpose today. We're gonna save these for, uh, for my lunch utensils. <laughs> So the dishwasher is pretty much filled all the way. Can't put any more stuff in it. All that I have left to put in to what is these things, which I'm kind of sad that I couldn't put everything into the dishwasher, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And I'll just run another cycle once this cycle is over. But I think we did a great, a great, great progress. And my kitchen looks a lot more like it, how it used to be. So lately I've been in a huge like wine, fanatic I, i've really been um thirsting on some wine uh, just because uh i am getting a little older so hard liquor and beer it's not not the most healthiest choices uh to drink or safest as someone uh, my my liver i actually monitor my liver levels a, a lot because i am on testosterone as a trans man so i don't want to i don't drink that often maybe like i'll say i drink maybe one time a week and i when i when i do do that i want to have a good time and I, I and if i want to get drunk i want to have an enjoyable time to get there and wine surprisingly has been a great drink that doesn't get me too uh too inebriated but tastes good and I'm able to sip it, you know, it doesn't, it's, I'm never pressured to drink too much. So uh, lately I've been drinking a lot, uh, not a lot of wine, but I've been drinking wine one, like once a week with whenever I go out or have a little date night with my girlfriend. But I've noticed that wine is really expensive. Like you buy these 750 milliliter bottles for like seven bucks, but at the same time, like you finish it in like one night. And I don't even drink that much. Maybe I'll drink like two glasses. Uh, the one time a week that I do drink wine. So I went to the store this week when before I last night before I had my little party and I was like, hey, these box wines are are like advertised to hold four bottles of wine and 
cost half as much. But I was always worried to buy them because you know it's more money up front, but it but you do get more quantity. And um, I'm happy to say that uh, I was a little bit worried about the quality of how much it would how good it would taste. But I got this one, the uh, Provisions Chardonnay. It tastes amazing. It's one of the best wines I've had. Uh, I'm not a wine connoisseur or anything like that. I don't spend that much money on wine. I only really buy cheap wine or sparkling Proseccos. And this wine is great, it's cheap, and I really like it. So uh, that's gonna be a regular fridge item for my party and date nights. So I figured I'm going to show y'all what I got for my girlfriend for Valentine's this year, just because this is gonna be uploaded after Valentine's Day and after she sees it, John Luke. These gifts are not for you, baby. You get tons of gifts throughout the day. Um, but like, I'm super proud of the gifts I got for her. Um, a lot of it is curated to her likes and dislikes. For the container, I got this cute love like bag. And in addition, I, I decided not to go get a balloon, but get one of these things, just because these are easy to like prop up somewhere and they last a long time. Like, my friend gave me one years ago and it lasted like three years. I'm not sure if she's gonna keep it for three years, but um, yeah, I just thought this was a cuter option than a balloon. Maybe next year I'll get a balloon. So I got that for her. And then one of the pet names she gives me is that I'm her cuddly koala. <laughs> so I got her one of these weighted like, cud not cud actually I think this was called a cuddly koala. Yeah, this was on Amazon was listed as a cuddly koala plush bear. Um, so I got her a cuddly koala plush bear. What's really great about this one is that it's weighted. So it helps with people with anxiety, specifically kids, but you know, adults are allowed to have comfort creatures that, that are not live too. So it's weighted and it has a slight, it went away, but when, I, when you first get it, it has a slight lavender scent to it. And funny enough, when I first got uh, unboxed this thing, uh, Jean-Luc rubbed himself on the bear. And um, lavender is known to be like a calming pheromone for cats. So like he like slept all day <laughs> after he rubbed himself on it. Um, so that's what he gets for trying to clean it. It doesn't really, it has a slight lavender scent still, but like it was really strong when I first unboxed it. So I got her this cuddly koala. Then I got her uh, this Lineage Korean skincare pack. Uh, I got, I found this surprisingly at TJ Maxx of all places. And apparently they don't sell this in the US. You have to get it imported. Um, I know Lineage is pretty popular among Sephora and Ulta, but they don't sell this specific line from Lineage. They sell their like lip, lip mask thing, which I've been wanting to get for a while. Uh, but yeah, so, um, it's like five different things from this specific line. I'm sure Sheila is going to absolutely love it and I got it for a steal at TJ Maxx. So I guess TJ Maxx every now and then will have an imported line from a famous Korean brand. And then she's been telling me she really likes flower, flower bomb. So I got her the 3.4 ounce of Victor and Ralph's flower bomb. Uh, I have Spice Bomb and I really love Spice Bomb. I really want to get the Spice Bomb Extreme Flanker. Um, but yeah, this is the um, the cutesy girly and femi equivalent <laughs> of Spice Bomb. And lastly, she recently ran out of Tatcha, which is a Japanese beauty care product, Tatcha Spice Wash Cleanser. This cleanser is so expensive. I have no idea why a cleanser should be this expensive. All of Tatcha's products are super expensive. I don't ever plan on buying this for myself, but she really liked it. She ran out and she, it's hard for her to, it's hard for anyone, even me, <laughs> to afford something like this. So this is what it looks like. It's a really cute purple, like, container, which is her favorite color, which is good. But, um, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know if you know about the secret magnificent healing properties that make this $40 please put it in the comments because I have no idea maybe I'll ask my friend who wants to go into dermatology but um yeah those are all the gifts I got for her I am super super excited to gift it so I just shaved and freshened up a little I don't know I'm about maybe like four and a half years on tea 
as of right now and it's gotten to the point where my beard grows really quickly and I have to shave like either week weekly or every two weeks and it just grows so fast oh my god it got so unruly or like since, since the last time I shaved it and like it's starting to get thicker which makes it more itchy I definitely know I'm in need of a haircut too but we're gonna we're gonna put off a hair the haircut until next week I kind of embrace this unruly wolverine look I kind of love it <laughs> um it's it's attractive to some people, not attractive to other people, but I, I really like how I look when I'm a little, my hair is a little unruly. Um, but I definitely know starting next week, it's gonna get even too much for me. I get so itchy, like my hair is so thick uh, and like nice. Like I love the texture of my hair, but it is, it's hard uh, to have this kind of hair as a human because I just get so itchy. Uh, I just feel so good to have my like beard trimmed down. Uh, if you're wondering what grade I put my beard at, I, I I stay for a number number three open on the top and number three closed in the bottom. Just because the bottom grows a little bit faster than the top, and I like the top to look a little bit longer. If you if you are a femme who has no idea what I'm saying in this in this little segment, it's okay. Uh, it's mostly for people who have beards. Uh, we have to set our um, shaver guards to a certain setting depending on the length that we want it. So yeah. I'm gonna study a little bit, get ready for the gym, and I got something from the gym that I'm really excited to show y'all because it's gonna help organize my little uh, perfume collection a lot better. So if you're looking at my perfume collection right now, I have a lot of bottles, which are fine. One day I'm gonna get shelves. I don't wanna invest in a shelf right now because I might be moving soon. But what I've been really embracing these travel sets because I can take these anywhere. I can take them on a flight. And they're just so nice to have around you just twist them and they open up and then you can spray the perfume but i hate the fact that they're in these cardboard boxes when they're shipped to me and i want to get more of these over time and get less of these bottles because i'm pretty sure like this this bottle of mont blanc legend that's gonna last me like 20 years um so i want to get a lot more of these travel sprays because then i can have more perfumes that smell different and I want to be able to store them strategically. So I'll be showing you all what I got uh, after I come back from the gym on how I'm going to start storing these um, travel size perfume uh, little atomizers. Alrighty y'all, I just got back from the gym and I picked up the package I was telling y'all about from my Amazon locker. And here it is, let's open it up. I'm super looking forward to seeing if it'll fit my little travel size perfume bottle. Okay. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. It says it should hold 40 something of these containers. Um, so let's look at the little sauce. But let's see. And here it is. So, if you're wondering what the heck it, this is, especially if you're not a femme or a, a cis woman um, or trans woman, uh, is that these, uh, these are like makeup accessory holders. So like they hold nail polish, lipstick, brushes and everything. So I saw this browsing through Amazon and I looked up these travel size perfume holders and they sell them on like Etsy, but they're like $20 each. This was like $12. So I was like, okay, well, if these fit in here, then that solves a problem. And they look pretty classy. Like it's like, it's like a little bit of incline. So when I stack them up, they're gonna look great. So it looks like it's gonna fit. Oh, <laughs> maybe it's just a little too big. Ah. Oh. Oh my god. Uh, I kind of expected this to happen. Uh, that I might not fit the whole, uh, just the, whole, the holder and the perfume inside. But, luckily enough, I knew that if it didn't fit the whole thing, it was gonna at least fit the juice. So, I only really need one of these uh, to carry around and I can just put whichever perfume I want. Um, at whichever day in in the holder right so if I take it out it should fit right let's see 
Yep. And it fits perfectly. I think I think this will work. I'm gonna put uh, the rest of the uh, collection, the travel size collection I have in here. So I just racked up all the travel sets I have so far. I ordered four more, so they're gonna fill up these top brackets. But I'm not too upset. Like uh, originally, I was a little upset that I couldn't put the whole holder in here. But I realized that I, I actually have a label maker in my wish list right now because the holders don't actually tell you the name of the perfume, which can get really annoying because you're like, I don't know which holder has which perfume. So if I just leave it out like this, you'll notice that almost I have scent bird. So these are two. These are scent birds, and this is Alexandria fragrances. All the perfume holders don't have the name of the perfume but the actual um the actual atomizer will have the name of the perfume so this ends up working out perfectly for for this occasion because now i can see which perfume i'm going to put in the perfume holder before i spray it on and take it with me to travel so all in all um although i was a little upset that it wasn't big enough to hold the holder, I only really need one or one or two holders because um, the holders for the Scentbird and Alexandria Fragrances one, uh, they're a little bit different, um, but I can just keep that somewhere else. And uh, this is a really great way to showcase my, my travel size scents with also the names out here. So this one is Leith by Ulrich, Ulrich Long. Uh, my girlfriend got me that. All the scent birds one are gifts from my girlfriend. And this one is Amwadia's Reflection Man. So, uh, all in all, I'm still satisfied and I'm super happy with this purchase. And I think I'll get more as I get more and more travel perfumes. So I just cleaned up my dresser a little bit and reorganized how it looked like. And I put, the, put it in the middle. And I think it looks really good, y'all. Right? Um... The reason why I put this in the middle is this thing is really light and John Luke, he's notorious for going on top of things and batting it away. And I don't want him batting it away to the point where it falls in here or falls somewhere else. Like I just don't want him to do that. So I put it in the middle and the heavier perfumes are on either side. I think this looks really great. Um, yeah, I'm proud of myself for this. So I soaked the plants for about 10 hours. It's around... 9 p.m. right now and then I put them on two paper towels to dry out they're pretty much dry so I can put them back in the terrarium and I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like once I put it back in so when I made this terrarium uh, it was like a workshop and it, I was the only guy in the workshop but everybody everybody thought mine was like super cool because of the color scheme I chose so and also I tried to use some of my like little photography skills to set it up so I know I used this red this like long artificial plant here so i put the other long plant usually on the opposite side just to get it give it a little bit of a contrast so i put that over here and then i think i put this one somewhere in the middle so i put it right there oh gonna make sure it's straight oh my god i'm tipping over everything and this I can yeah stand up right there and this little one since it's like contrasty I'll put it I'll put it on the side in between like right here and make the stand up a little bit better and yeah there's there's my terrarium I don't know if you can see up better on this side but yeah it's so cute right y'all i think i did a great job of decorating this terrarium so yeah these plants should be good for about another week before i have to re rewater them but i highly recommend like doing a little terrarium date or self date or friend date or whatever uh, we were the only couple when we went to the workshop and uh, the rest were just friends going on a friend date together and uh it's just so cute and having to maintain something like this that reminds you of a really special time you spent with some loved ones and it's date night day i just got back from work because i had to work that morning john luke's so happy i'm home i had to put him in the bedroom this morning because the pest control guys were here and they treat the bathroom where his usual litter box is and I don't want him getting in contact with the uh, the, uh, the uh, insecticide 
because I don't think that's going to be healthy. So I have a couple of hours to freshen up and then I'm going to get dressed for a cute little date. I think I'm going to wear a suit with a turtleneck. I think that's the look we're going to go for. And then uh, I'll let you all know how the food is. Okay, so I totally lied to y'all. I did not decide to go all along with the turtleneck. And that's because Georgia, for some reason, decided to be uh, kind of warm tonight. So I thought I was going to overheat in on a turtleneck. So I decided to go with the white button down. Honestly, I think this was a great decision to make because I was baking even when we were on the porch, um, porch seating. So I think I still look amazing. I paired it off with some brown, uh, with a brown belt and some brown shoes, uh, with an all navy suit that I had lying around. Actually, I wore the suit a lot for my interviews. And overall, I think I look dashing for this date. Hey, John Luke. Hey, y'all. So. It's the, uh, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, I honestly had a really great time hanging out uh, this Valentine's Day uh, with my girlfriend. Uh, she actually got me some gifts, which I really didn't expect her to get me that much stuff, but she actually got me quite a bit of stuff. Um, but um, the cherry on top is Spice Bomb Extreme. Y'all know that I really, really love fragrances, um, but... Earlier on in this vlog, I showed y'all the gifts that I got her and I got her flower bomb, which is basically the feminine equivalent of spice bomb. This is kind of like a off edition of spice bomb though, the original spice bomb. Um, I kind of have a couple of samples of it and I really love the smell, but sometimes it can be a bit too peppery. Spice bomb extreme is a really, really great scent. It's a little bit more sugary. It gives me more of a cinnamon vibe and I really, really like it. I'm so happy with this gift. Like y'all, I should have filmed my reaction <laughs> to this because I had no idea she was gonna get me this and it was such a, such a nice surprise. And it's just so funny that we both ended up getting each other uh, like the his and, his and her version, if we wanna gender it, um, of the same like fragrance line. It was, it was, it was really cute. Um, for dinner, we went to this Italian restaurant called Nino's. It's the oldest authentic Italian restaurant here in Atlanta. It's been around for 54 years. The food was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. It was our first time also trying escargot. Um, and usually when I go to the supermarket, we see like the tiny, tiny snails uh, on sale. But like this escargot was like thick and juicy um, and really, really tasty. I thought it was going to be more fibrous than it was. It was actually really creamy and soft and they flavored it exceptionally well. It didn't have any weird smells or anything. It was just all overall such a great experience. Then my pasta was absolutely fantastic. Uh, she ordered a lamb rigatoni. It was very, very lamby in a good way. And uh, the food was fantastic. Nino's, you're doing a great, great job. I hope you stick stick around for a while. Um, my, my girlfriend says that sometimes I I like everything. She said it was good, but not as fantastic as I think it is. But I think it was a really, really good restaurant and a really great experience. We both had a lot of fun eating, talking, and just, you know, enjoying the vibes. We got the outdoor patio seating and it was great. So if y'all are looking for a really cool, authentic Italian place, I mean, the full menu is in Italian, uh, check out, check out Nino's. Um, they deserve, they deserve all the love that they get in the city. So I kind of want to end this vlog episode um we're talking a little bit about how i make content especially my health education content uh for youtube and for you all and i want to emphasize the fact that i go out of my way to try and not to sound too proper in my videos and there are many reasons why i do that and a lot of it is because I see a lot of content creators who are in medicine trying to create a stark difference between who they are versus their viewers and their patients. And I've never been the type of person to make myself look that way. I don't care how many degrees I have or how much money I make. I still want to be an everyday guy who's your doctor. And I try to translate that to how I interact with my patients and how I interact with y'all online through my content. So I go out of my way to not overtly use scientific language. I am prone to doing that. You'll see in some of my YouTube videos, I will do that. And I try my best not to just because I want y'all to know that I'm an 
everyday human being. I just have an expertise in an area where not a lot of people know about, and it tends to be their bodies. So I'm going to give you advice, but I'm not going to go out of my way to make it seem like, oh, I'm so much smarter than you, and I know all this language. Yes, I do, but at the end of the day, if I'm speaking high and mighty to everyone that I'm talking to, and my patient or you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's not going to help anyone. So um, I never re-record uh, segments where I might make grammatical error errors or I might, you know, stumble upon my words. I, I unless it's like I like I'm completely unintelligible where you can't understand what the heck I'm saying. But uh, I am always trying to convey that. I am full of faults too. I am a human being. I am not a perfect person. But what I'm going to do right and I'm, what I'm going to do well is I'm going to do the research so that you know what's best for your body and you know how to best take care of yourself. And even though I'm an average guy just like you all, um, y'all can trust me. And that's the core of it all. I don't just want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor you can trust so that's why i go out of my way to like not only like just make mistakes in my manner of speech and not use overtly clinical and academic language in my videos i also go out of my way to speak to you all about my health because i'm not a perfect person either i am prone to the same health de detriments and health problems as everyone else and I hope that y'all can appreciate that. Um, and I hope that y'all can see how authentic and genuine I'm trying to be in my videos. Some, some people will always think I'm a fake. Some people will always think I am high and mighty. Some people will never like to see my face. Some people want me dead. But at the end of the day, I want my patients, and especially if you, all, if you are consuming my content to learn more about your bodies uh, or other people's bodies and be more humble, and learning about the experiences of others. I hope you get that experience for me. Anyways, that's it for this vlog. Uh, I hope to see y'all in the next video and follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. I'm doing a lot and uh, it's hard to put it on every on every single platform that I own. And also it, um, you know, it allows you to see me in different lights. Uh, I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This has been.